Hello, I'm Police Commissioner William Dwyer. Welcome to another season of Police Journal. This program will give you an inside look at the Warren Police Department and highlight other issues that impact our community. I always welcome your comments and suggestions. Please feel free to email me at wdwyer at warrenpd.org. Thank you and enjoy the show. Again, welcome to Police Journal. On this segment of Police Journal, we're going to be talking about and discussing police training and how important police training is. You know, I go back in law enforcement uh, over four decades, and I can recall the, the lack of training when I first became a police officer in Detroit. Uh, the basic training was the police academy. After you graduated from the police academy, uh, you were put on the road and um, basically had no training after that. Things have really changed, and uh, today uh, training is a priority with most departments as it is with the Warren Police Department. Training and education, and I think in Warren, uh, as I indicated, it's a priority, and today we have uh, two guests. Uh, we have Sergeant uh, Tom Randall. He's uh, in charge of our training section. Uh, Sarge, welcome to uh, Police Journal. Thank you, Commissioner. And we also have uh, Corporal Brendan Brosnan, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, Corporal uh, Brosnan's uh, our range master. That's and correct, uh, people are probably saying, what is a range master right now? And we're going to be talking about your duties and responsibilities. But first, uh, Sarge, why don't we talk about your responsibilities <coughs> uh, as far as being the uh, officer in charge or the sergeant in charge of the training uh, section or division? Sure. Yeah, I, uh, I'm the immediate supervisor and the coordinator for all the department training, which includes. Uh, uh, in-house training for all the officers. It, it includes uh, advanced police training where they go throughout the state for other training. And uh, we also uh, run the uh, FTO program, which is field training officer program for new hires. And I also supervise the gun <clears throat> range also. Let's go back a little bit as far as uh, your background. Uh, you've been with the department for how long and what have what your assignments been since you've been with the department? Uh, for 23 years I've been with the police department and I started out road patrol. I worked a uh, community policing unit. Um, I was promoted to corporal. I was detective for five years. I was also in our gang squad uh, division, which is uh, now called Special Operations Unit, for a year and a half. And then I was promoted to sergeant. I was a road patrol sergeant, and then now I've been running the training division for about four years. Very good. Brendan, you've been, uh, why don't you give us a little background on yourself? It'll be 18 years this August that I've been with the department. Uh, worked road patrol, I worked uh, undercover narcotics. I worked the Detective Bureau for seven years, and for that was uh, Squad 1 in Homicides. I've been on the SWAT team now for almost eight years, and I'm one of our uh, team snipers. Uh, I'm also the Range Master currently. Okay, very good. Tom, let's go back into uh, you know, the training yes. aspects of uh, the department. Uh, you being the training sergeant, as I indicated, uh, you know how important it is. And uh, people always talk about what type of training do officers receive. Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, the mandatory training block that uh, you've established here in Warren? Yes, we have a, uh, what we call a 40-hour block of training, which is an entire week. And it encompasses uh, mandatory training. It also encompasses training that uh, uh, we research and fit would, would help the officers on the street. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the whole department is required to attend some or all of the training. Mm -hmm. An example is uh, the mandatory training is firearms training, qualifications with shotgun and the rifle. Uh, we also have uh, mandatory PPCT, DT, which is called pressure point control tactics and defensive tactics, which is every other year, but we've been doing it every year, hands-on physical training and defensive tactics. Uh, we also have mandatory CPR and bloodborne pathogen training. Uh, that's mandatory for everyone in the department, as, as is cultural diversity, which we do a block, a half-day block on cultural diversity. Um, for That's mandatory for all department personnel also. This uh, cultural diversity training, I know that most departments have cultural diversity training. Uh, how long have we had it here in Warren? Uh, at least 15 years we've had it in Warren. And uh, I try to, every year I try to encompass uh, a different uh, ethnic community in, it, in, in, our, in our training block. Uh, for instance, uh, this year we had uh, a refresher on African American um, in the law enforcement community. And also we uh, touched on Hmong training too. Uh, we've mm -hmm. done uh, the Arab community in the past um, and, and, and a host of others. Um, and it's, uh, it's because uh, Warren being a diverse city that we are, uh, right. we, try, we try to encompass different uh, cultures, uh, you know, cultures so officers on the street have a better understanding of the people they're dealing with so right. it could actually diffuse a situation because <clears throat> certain ethnic group might be acting a certain way but th they're not really being disrespectful but it may look that way on the surface but if our officers are trained 
um, and, and exposed to this different culture could actually uh, diffuse the situation. Okay. How about legal updates? Uh, do, you, do we have people coming in, uh, you know, from the prosecutor's office, uh, updating the officers as far as any new laws? Yes, we do. Absolutely. Uh, we have uh, prosecutor's office comes in. Uh, they do a two-hour block. We also had a um, assistant prosecutor from the uh, sexual crimes division this year come in for an hour and a half block, and we also have our city attorneys come in for an hour on uh, city uh, ordinances and basic laws of the city. Do you change that training uh, schedule uh, periodically uh, as far as what's, <coughs> what's offered on, on the mandatory training? In other words, do we switch it around a lot? Some of it's mandatory as far as I understand the, the CPR and the firearms training. Yes. Uh, what, do, what do you change periodically that would uh, differ from you know, the standard uh, training that you establish? Yes. Uh, well, for instance, like this year, um, we uh, touched on uh, diabetics because uh, they have, there are certain reactions that police officers might, uh, under, you know, might take as somebody being intoxicated. And that when may, actually that, that may have uh, uh, be because of an incident that occurred here in Warren, and, and we see that there's a need to maybe have a better understanding as far as diabetics and. Yes, that that is that is a result of an incident. Um, mm -hmm. And we also had uh, we also did a quick course on uh, bicycle safety and bicycle laws because. Uh, um, police officers, uh, you know, we know the, the nuts and bolts of our job, but there are some little different areas that you're not so brushed up on. So we thought that would actually help officers uh, on the street. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we had, we had various things. We're, we're, we're very proactive with the training division because uh, um, instead of having to be reactive all the time to an incident that happened, we try to avoid that. For instance, uh, we touched this year, we did more prisoner searches and handcuffing. Um, just, just for safety. Um, so we're not reacting to some bad situation. We're actually giving them the tools to go out there and effectively do their job. So maybe for our viewing audience, you could uh, <clears throat> kind of indicate uh, how many officers we have assigned to training and basically what their day-to-day -day responsibilities are. It's, uh, well, I'm the sergeant. Uh, I oversee the office. Uh, we have uh, three training corporals assigned to the division. Two are actual training corporals in the office, and then okay. Corporal Brosnan here is the range master. And our duties, um, they, uh, they're actually uh, a vast array of uh, duties. Uh, we're in charge of the tasers. Um, when there's an issue with the tasers, we've got to keep track of them. The cartridges, when there's a deployment, mm -hmm. we keep track of every tasering and uh, the circumstances involved. Um, also, um, the, uh, you know, the, the uh, weapons we use, mm -hmm. you know, the range master, uh, if there's a def malfunction with a weapon, uh, the range master can mm -hmm. either fix it then, or if he can't, he will give them a, a replacement while we get the other uh, Gun fixed. Okay. Let's talk to uh, Corporal Brosnan uh, for a minute. Uh, you're, you're the range master, and so what is your duties uh, basically? Uh, uh, well, my primary duty at the department is to organize different uh, firearms trainings programs, um, oversee um, a group of instructors that I have, uh, and then we implement that training, uh, whether it be for pistols, uh, the officers' off duty firearms. Um, the 870 shotguns, or even now our new patrol rifles, which we we're fortunate enough to have you come through as commissioner and uh, finally get these weapons. 